Hi guys, it's Jamie from Boxing Life, and in today's video, I wanted to do a tactical overview of the upcoming unification welterweight clash between Errol Spence Jr. and Jordanes Ugas this coming April. Right from the off, I think this could be a very close technical encounter that can go the full 12 rounds. Errol Spence has obviously been through a lot these last two years, having had that horrendous car crash where he almost died. Remarkably, he came back one year later in the ring and put on a fairly convincing display against Danny Garcia on his comeback fight, which you could argue being a big risk on his team considering what happened to him. However, it very much paid off as Spence put on a smart, calculated but safe performance. He utilised his reach, southpaw jab and movement to stop Garcia from setting up those powerful knockout hooks. This obviously led to Spence getting that dream fight with Manny Pacquiao. However, due to a torn eye retina and training for his dream fight and big payday of fighting Pacquiao, it was officially over. It was in fact the Cuban Ugas who was on the undercard that would get the chance against Manny Pacquiao and very much took his chance against the Filipino putting on a solid, efficient display to become the new WBA Super Welterweight World Champion. But now let's have a look at both fighters and what will be required to win on April 16th. Aero Spence for me overall has a tremendous jab which he uses to maintain the distance and control the fight. Overall the man from Texas has a very efficient style and guard which makes him difficult to break past. His last three fights have gone the distance against high quality opponents though. In both the Mikey and Danny Garcia fights, he's been able to pick off the smaller men trying to close the distance with his jab while countering as they come into range. However, against Sean Porter we saw a much different approach, which was mainly due to the aggressiveness of Porter to make the fight as uncomfortable as possible. People underestimate Spence's strength and ability to fight on the inside, and he is very much able to cope at close quarters. Ugas, on the other hand, has a very different style to these last three opponents. He's not your typical Cuban boxer who likes to box in the back foot or even fight on the outside. Instead, he likes to take control of the centre ring for the most part and start to apply calculated pressure by slowly creeping forward onto the opponent to push them back onto the ropes. Here, he will usually try to occupy the guard with his jab and then throw a straight or looping right hand. This is something he has done in the past successfully against the likes of Robinson, but also most recently versus Manny Pacquiao. Not only that, he very intelligently mixes up this right hand by sometimes throwing it to the body. This could once again be a useful tactic for Ugas to use against the Southpaw Spence. For Errol Spence though, he's very much aware of orthodox fighters trying to get the better of him with this shot. So, he usually looks to time the opponent throwing this punch by taking a small half step back himself or he waits to time the right hand with his own jab to reduce the impact while also timing which gives him the opportunity to counter back with his left hand. Another area Spence may have to be cautious of is the Cuban has much success throwing that lead right hand counter after an opponent jabs. Ugas has done this in the past, but he might have to take a jab off Errol Spence to get this shot off. Spence though cannot afford to be throwing lazy jabs in this fight, or he could expect an unexpected right hand. For Spence, I believe he needs to be slightly braver in this fight to stop the advances of Ugas. As mentioned, Ugas isn't your typical Cuban fighter that fights on the outside but prefers to being at mid-range, slowly closing the distance over time. Defensively, he has a very tight guard and prefers to use small, subtle backward foot movement or even pivots to get out of the way, while also using upper body rolls in the pocket to dodge punches. However, looking at previous fights, it's clear though when aggression is applied, it forces the Cuban to try and reset himself again. This is a perfect opportunity for Spence to attack the body and fight on the inside against the Cuban and make it as uncomfortable as possible. He's done this before with fighters that have used tighter guards and I think this is a possible area Spence could exploit. 
Even Pacquiao managed to push back the Cuban many times and this in my opinion should be a welcoming sign for Spence to maybe be slightly more aggressive in this fight. Question marks are still on Spence after that car crash and the eye injury and after almost a year and a half out of the ring, will he still be the same? Both fighters in my opinion have the tools to win this fight and I'm looking forward to seeing who adapts best. April 16th will reveal all. Hope you enjoyed this tactical breakdown guys, thought I'd try something slightly different and talk through the potential tactics and techniques this time. Let me know if you'd like more videos like this going forward, hit that like button if you enjoyed it, if you're new here why not subscribe. Also let me know who you think will win in the comments below, it should be an exciting fight and I'm really looking forward to it. As always guys thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.